Hallelujah. God bless everyone and welcome to the service. Glory. We praise you, Father. Lord, God bless everyone. And God bless you for tuning in. We are excited to be here today. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father, King of kings and Lord of lords. Wherever you are, God bless you. Today is exciting again. The fall on the passion of Christ. We join in, in here on God Send Missions channel. And we are honored to have you and to have fellowship together. So God bless you. Father, we praise you. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. Touch everyone who is here. Bless everyone. Encourage those who need encouragement. Touch those who need a touch. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak you over the life of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. All right, so God bless you and welcome. Today we want to continue on the passion of Christ. The things that lead to the coming of Christ. The things that lead. So today we are on the four. So if you haven't watched the one and two, I encourage you to go back to look at the videos. Yesterday we talked about the fact that um, God spoke, you know, to Cain. God did spoke to Cain to get rid of sin. He told him that sin was crudging in his heart. That is Genesis 4 verse 7. The Lord said to Cain, he says, Sin want to master you, for you must rule over it. And we explain the fact that there are three categories of death. The first death is the death that people don't know God, that they are separated from relationship with God is first death. The second death is when we die in this physical body, when we cease to function of life. And the third is the destruction which will happen on the lake of fire. Those are the three categories of death we explained yesterday. And we emphasize on the fact that God wants us to be obedient to, to walk with God, require us to be obedient. All right, today we want to um, zoom in to Noah and the things that happen. All right. And so the scripture tells us that at the course of time, Adam knew his wife again, and bare his son, and called his name Seth. For God, for God said, she had appointed me another seed instead of evil. So they have another son, call him Seth. All right, the Bible is specific, and he wanted to give us the genealogy that lead Christ. So there, there are other many genealogies there, but he wants us to focus because things that happen in history, if we want to put all of them in the Bible, we cannot get the full picture of the scriptures. So the things that were put in the scripture that makes it the Bible are things that will help us to learn about the origin of our faith and how we can continue with God. Otherwise, if there are too much information, we will get lost at the main point. So the main purpose of the Bible or the scripture is to show us things that happen and how God deals with people so we can learn our lessons. All right. So they have another boy called Seth. And he said to Seth to him and to Seth, there was born a son called Enosh. And then men began to call on the name of the Lord. All right, so this tells us that people started multiplying on the earth. Now remember, Adam lived over 900 years. So it's a long period of time. Many things could happen in these 900 years. He may have many other children, 
which we don't know, but they wanted to focus on set because they want to show us how we came about to Christ. And so it's important for us as believers to, to keep that perspective in mind. All right. And men began to call on the name of the Lord in the time of set. He tells you that people have relationship with God at the time. That's why they were able to call on the name of the Lord. All right. And so it tells us that um, from said, all right, let's go here. He says, Adam and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and Adam died. All right. And said, live how many years? And 105 years and have a son called Enosh. Seth has Enosh, and Enosh had a son called Canaan, and Canaan had a son called Mahalalil, and Mahalalil had a son called Jared. All right, so we want to look at that. Today we want to look at the Noah and the flood. All right, so and Mahalalil lived and begat Jared 800 years. Uh, 830 years and begat sons and daughters. So the father of Jared is Mahalali, who is the grandson of Seth, the son of Adam. All right, and to Jared, he lived and had a son called Enoch. All right, Jared was the grandfather of Noah. And so Jared gave birth to Enoch, and he tells us that Enoch walked with God and was not found. And Enoch walked with God after he began what Methuselah. All right? And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and was not found. God took Enoch for the first time among all human race. God had a man representing the human race in the kingdom of heaven. All right? So it is the story of Noah is very short, but it's a character that we need to study to look into why this man has, you know, such a credibility with God that God took him. All right. And so it continued to the time where Noah had to be born. And so from, from Enoch. Enoch had another son called him Methuselah, and Methuselah had a son, all right, which is called Lamech, and Lamech is the father of Noah, all right? So these are the generation. Now, this is the thing we need to keep in mind. Their fathers taught their children the ways of God. You see, this is how it should be. So the ways of God first should be taught by the family. So you as a parent, you must first of all teach your children the ways of God. That's what happened. And so, and he, and he called, he said, Lamech, and Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, saying, this shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hand because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. So they were working hard, and they said, Noah will be a comfort to them at the time. And he tells us that Amek lived and died, and so on, and so on. And he tells us, Noah lived 500 years old, and he had children, and their name was Shem, Ham, and Seth. So today we want to look at the story of Noah, but I needed to give you the background to this time, how things happened. All right, why we have this genealogy from Seth, from Adam to Seth, Seth to Noah, because they want us to learn the genealogy of Christ. Christ is our Savior, and so we don't need much information and detail. All right, and so he says, it came in the process of time, and that, and it came to pass, men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. God bless your building, 
Oluyemi. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that were fair. So that means that the sons of men were not fair. <laughs> All right, you see, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Well, we don't, we don't want to go into this, but we do know that these things were going on at the time. There were people who were different race. Let's just say that different race were on the earth at the time. Now, some, um, some were referring to, um, you know, um, were referring to, for example, the son of Seth to be the son of God and, this, and the children of Cain to be the children of men. So, like, these are people who are following God and and Cain were the people who were not following God. So the sons of God and the sons of men, it could mean that the children of Seth versus the children of Cain. Uh, we don't have the full idea. The Bible does not disclose many details. So let's not go there. But this is what the Bible tells us. And that's not more important. What is important is what happened. All right? And the Lord God says, all right, and the, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years old. And then he tells us another thing. He said, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, uh, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they birthed children to them. The same became the mighty men of valor, which were in those days. Right. So this is the point we want to look at today. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great on the earth. And that every imagination, imagine, imagination and thought of people's heart were only continually do you see the climax of sin so sin started with adam disobeying it entered his son cain killing abel and now sin has multiplied feel the thought and imagination of people only to be evil that means someone is sitting and imagining how can i kill that person how can i destroy that person how can i steal that person how can i make evil so this become the imagination and thought of the human heart why because sin corrupt that is the reason why when a person is a christian that person must do their best to trust god for the grace to do away with sin especially wrong thinking because that was the very thing that made god to destroy the generation of noah and look at what God says in verse uh, 6 of chapter 6 of Genesis. And God repented. The word, the know, you know the word repented means to regret. God regretted that he had made man. And he made him sad. You see that? Sin made God to regret that he has ever created human beings. Didn't he know they were gonna sin? God was shocked by the level of their sickness and rebellion. God was so shocked and he, he was sad. Imagine when you have children, imagine having children. If you're a parent, you have these children. And there are things you have instructed them not to do, things that will destroy destroy, you know, what you are building, things that will destroy the house. And yet these children, they go ahead. They did not only do things that will destroy the house, they destroy themselves. They think and devise ways how they can destroy what you have built. Won't you be sad? So that was what happens to God. 
All right, that was what happens to God. But however, remember, God already knew what he was going to do. He knew what, what he was going to do already before he created Adam. That's why God made a woman. All right, because through the woman, he will have, God himself will have to come to the world through demons. <laughs> All right. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. And the creeper things and the fowls of the earth, for I have, for it repented of me that I have made them. So I am very disappointed that I made them. And he tells us, but there is a but. This is a contrast. God wants to destroy all the well, but God find a man. I prophesy that may God look at you and say, but. I wanted to destroy these people, but may you become that person whom God will look and say, because of you, I will not destroy lives. Hallelujah. And so God saw Noah. The Bible said Noah found grace in the sight of God. Right? Noah found grace in the sight of God. And God instructed Noah what to do. God told Noah to build an ark because he was going to destroy everything on the face of the earth. There is only one who can destroy the world. He is the creator, the mighty one, the everlasting father. He is the only one who can destroy the world. No one else can do it. People may try to inflict and do havoc on the earth, but only God has the power to do it and he has done it once all right he has done it once and so god told noah that he was gonna destroy the earth and that he should build an ark now noah all right is a replica of christ do you know that because in his generation he was the only one who found grace in the sight of god and God preserved him and his family. And it's the same thing. God wanted to wipe out humanity. But then Christ came. Hallelujah. And Christ found favor in the sight of God. And Christ became the one to save us. And so you will see that the, the, the ark that Noah built is a symbol of the salvation of Christ. Right? It's a symbol of the salvation of Christ. All right, so when you read the story of Noah, you will see that um, rain was on the earth, you know, for 40 days and 40 now. All right, let's look at Genesis 6, 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So this is one of the signs of the ends of time. When you see that, Human beings are imagining evil, thinking evil. All they are doing is evil. And you see violence everywhere in media. All the news is war, war, war. They are promoting violence. You see games that children are playing. Games is about war. They are programming their mind for violence. All right? So there come a time where violence become normal for children because they grow up with with, you know, cartoon that are violence, fighting, war, shoot. All this is the programming of mind. And when you go to the media, it's the same thing. Violence, they show you there is war here, killing here, killing here, killing here. It's, all this is programming. So whatever, so whatever you're going to think, you're going to think about evil, killing. There is killing here, there is killing there, there is killing there. And because of that, many people will begin to train themselves for violence. They will think they are preparing themselves for defense for their bodies for violence because then everyone is ready for violence. That was what happened. You see, the air was so corrupt. There was so immorality. And you know, when people don't know God, violence is the order of it is only through the knowledge 
and the fear of God that there is order in this community and society. All right? Look at places where they do not worship God. There is violence there. Violence in high level. They persecute people. They kill people for no reason. It's violence. And so when you began to see the society today, the news, people have their own thinking, their own way of life. That is the generation of Noah. And the Bible tells us as it was in the days of Noah. That's what Jesus says. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man when he will come upon the earth. The air was corrupted and filled with violence. And the Lord God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupted for all the flesh had corrupted his ways on the earth. Do you see that they have corrupted God's ways on the earth? However, there is a man there whose name is Noah. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the face of the earth. You see that God announced, so God decided, he says, the end of all the flesh is going to come and I'm going to destroy the earth. However, there, there still have to be a, a preservation for Christ to come. But in order for Noah and his family not to be destroyed, you know, not to be affected by the society, God had to wipe out all the evil. Just imagine this. Noah become more important to God than the whole generation. That means that the God we are dealing with, number is not a factor for him. Number is not a big deal for him. One man for God is greater than the whole generation. One man. You see that one man is greater than the whole generation. So if God will have to preserve you for his ways, he will do it by removing evil around you. So God had to wipe out the world so that they will not affect Noah. You get the point? So that they will not affect Noah because environment can influence, can corrupt, can impact. If you live in environment for a long time, you can become like that environment. It's the same. Some of you who go to churches, you become like that church. The world is like that church. You know. It's important to understand. See, and so when the father saw it, he says, if I don't destroy you, man, though I'm sad that I'm going to destroy them, but I have to. For the salvation plan to come. If Noah end up corrupted, then the whole world is finished. So God has to have a way of preserving Noah and his three sons. And we will still see that through these three sons of Noah, the earth populate again. And there is still sin. But God's plan of salvation came into this. All right, and so what we're looking at today is the fact that Noah represent what represent the symbol of Christ. All right, that man who whom God favored in his generation. Now that is called the generation of Noah. So Noah was the savior of that generation. All right, <laughs> of course it's only for his family. And then God said to Noah, "Make thee an ark." All right, make the an ark from the gopher wood. Rooms you should make in the ark, and you shall pitch it within it and without with pit. So God instructed Noah how to build the ark. He didn't learn it in university. <laughs> if you go to higher education, it's great. But there are many things God can teach. 
without, you know, um, human education access, God is able to do all things, all right? And so God to know what to do, how to put the windows, how to do everything, and what, and what, and what, and what, all right? And then in verse 18, God told him, I will establish my covenant between me and you, all right? I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the act, and thou and thy sons and thy son's wife, and your wife shall come into the act. So that was the covenant God made with them, that he was going to preserve them for that period of time when the flood will be coming. And God instructed Noah and said, Of every living thing of all flesh, two of it shall come into the boat. Remember, male and female. Male and female. All right? Why is that? Because for population, for reproduction, you need male and female. That is God's order of creation. All right? That's God's order of creation. Today we know there are people who have different kinds of feeling, but people should be educated because for procreation, for multiplication, for giving birth, you need male and female. And so for in order for the world and the animals and the planet to be replenished again, because God is not going to do a new work of creation. He's just going to continue with what he already created, but he has a way of preserving it and making it to stay until his time of fulfillment comes. So he said, male and female, you should make them enter the act, all right? And thus did Noah, verse 22 of Genesis 6, he said, Noah did according all that God has commanded him. So there he tells you, Noah obeyed God. In everything God tells him to do. It's the same thing with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus, though he was God, he made himself of no reputation. By becoming a man, he humbled himself and become obedient to God. It's the same thing he's telling you about Noah. Noah obeyed God in everything God tells him to do. The same for Christ. Christ obeyed God in everything he was asked to do. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. And then after Noah had done all this, the Lord told them to enter the ark to take some food with them for the animal and for his family so that they have to survive, they have to eat, because it's going to be a long time. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. God is spoken to Noah. For 40 days and 40 nights, there's going to be rain. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from all the face of the earth. And again, Noah did unto all that the Lord had commanded. You see that Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. It's important that you as a believer, your utmost desire should be to obey God. Once you are saved, the next step you need to take, the next thing you need to do, bring yourself to be obedient to the word of God. Because the purpose Christ saved you is to open your eyes to know the ways of God and to obey them. So there is no point to say that you are a Christian if you are not obedient to the ways of God. There is no point of saying that I am a follower of Christ or of God if you do not obey God in what he tells you to do. All right? It, it, it's pointless. So it's important that you as a Christian, the most important thing for you is not to go to church. It's good to go to church. It's not to pray. It's good to pray. It's not to sing. It's good to sing. It's not to preach. It's good to preach. The most important thing to be obedient to the ways of God, to the word of God, to God's instruction. 
If you don't do that, then you have not believed in Christ. And so, the purpose of Christ coming to the earth, it is not just for him to raise more rebellious children. No, he's raising obedient children. That's why he shows us how we should walk with God. In fact, he says, I am the way. He said, follow me and learn from me. That's what he told us. In Matthew 11 from verse 29, 30. He said, learn from me. All right, so as a believer, as a Christian, we are celebrating this, I mean, this season because Christ obeyed God. And I'm showing you how this plan of salvation came to happen. So for Christ to come, God has to preserve Noah. And the scripture tells us, it was not because Noah was special or something. The reason was because Noah had the fear of God. And because of his fear for God, he was obedient to God. You see that? He was obedient to God. Today we have too many rebellious Christians who say they are Christian, but they don't fear God. And because they do not fear God, they do not obey God. But the scripture tells us, Jesus says, fear God. He said, fear God rather than fear men. He said, fear God because he is the only one who has the power to destroy you physically and spiritually. Jesus teaches about fearing God. All right. And so he, from his life, he lived an obedience life. And through Christ, we are the sons and daughters of God. But before Christ came, these were the people God uses to prepare the way for Christ to come into the world. All right. And so the act of Noah, all right, symbolizes the salvation of Christ. And the flood symbolizes the coming judgment of God. So if you are not in that act, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be wiped out, even though God is so loving, even though God so loved the world. If you are not in that act, you will be destroyed. That's the reason why Jesus had to come, so that we can have access. No, God. All right, so it continued to tell us, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were opened upon the earth. So God opened the fountains of the deep. He tells us in the 600 years of Noah, so Noah now is 600 years old, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broke open and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. God cannot lie. All right? So it rained upon the whole earth 40 days and 40 nights. That is a terrible sin. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that sin. God had to let it rain 40 days and 40 nights. And you know the story afterward, the, the rain stay on the earth for almost a year. For almost a year. And after that, Noah and his children came out. And I want to read you something quickly from verse 8 of Genesis chapter 8. He says, and God remember Noah and every living thing that was in that act. And God made a window, a wind to pass over the earth, and the water were seized. Right? So here it tells you how God have, you know, remember Noah, he had mercy on Noah, and God let the, the wind that was bringing the rain upon the earth to stop. And then finally, Noah and his sons, they had the Lord has to speak to them to come out of the earth. So Genesis 8.15 says, And God spoke unto Noah, saying, Go forth out of the ark, you and, and the people with you in the ark, 
and bring forth every living thing that is with you. And then God says that continue to live on the earth, multiply and fill the earth. All right. So this is the story of Noah. And he says, and Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every beast that he see worthy and make a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the Lord smelled a sweet sorrow. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of the human being is evil from his youth. He said, neither will I destroy the earth again as I have done in the flood. All right. So here God made a covenant with Noah and God blesses them and and he tells us that, verse 22, why the air remained, sea time and harvest and cold time, heat, summer, winter, days and night will not cease. So this is God's pronunciation over Noah. All right, from verse chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be, be multiply, fruitful, and fill the earth. All right. So this is God, um, God blessings for Noah and his children. And God, and God said to Noah in verse nine of chapter nine, and behold, I establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you. Do you see the seed after you? All right. Seed after you. I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall I, all flesh, be cut off any more by the waters of flood. Neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy the whole earth. And God said, this is the covenant. This is the token of the covenant I will make between me and you and every living creature that is upon the face of the earth. I will set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of the covenant between me and you. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the air, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature upon the face of the earth. And I will not destroy the earth anymore like I have done. All right. So that's what God says, Abraham. And the rainbow, the bow there is the rainbow, shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature that is upon the face of the earth. All right. And, and God said this, you know what? This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and you upon the face of the earth. So God made a rainbow. So the rainbow was a sign that God will not destroy the earth with water anymore. So this is where we will stop today, um, looking at the passion of Christ. All right. But the few the key things here I want to bring to your mind is that number one Noah is a type of Christ that is found in that generation Noah feared God Noah found favor in the sight of God all right and Noah was obedience to God the Bible says Christ was obedient in all the things he suffered and laid on the earth he was obedience to the father and so the point I want to make today is that Jesus Christ, as we celebrate Easter, one of the key things he brought to us is obedience to God. Obedience is important to walking with God. And so we saw today that Noah was one of those men God uses to preserve the genealogy of Christ and the whole creation. All right. And there was there is something that we need to draw out today. The Bible said the imagination and the thought of human's heart were evil. 
All right? The thought and the imagination of the human's heart were evil. But if the point is you as a Christian, you as a Christian, how is your heart? What are the things you give your time to think about? What are the things that you concern yourself with? What are the things that you give your time to? All right? You as a child of God, you must not allow evil thoughts and wicked imagination in your heart. Because of these two things, God destroyed the generation of Noah. He destroyed the generation of Noah. The heart. You remember the scripture tells us God looks at the heart. God sees the heart. He looks at the heart. He doesn't look as we see, but he looks at the eye. All right, so this is the generation of Noah. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and thought of his heart was only continual. Okay, let's say this is a generation of Noah. You who are in Christ today, what is your thought and imagination like? What do you, how do you think? If we think generation of Noah were evil, how about us today? What do you wish your neighbor? What do you wish the people you meet at your workplace? At your marketplace? Those around you, the people you are dealing with, what are your imagination towards other people? What are our imagination? The Bible tells us those things that are good, think on it. You see that that's what Christ has done, come to show us the how to live. Remember, the wickedness of their heart is what makes God destroy them. Now tell me, if a person says he's a Christian and has a wicked heart, do you think that that person knows God? No. So what is the sign that a person knows God? That person must train his or herself to transform their thinking and imagination by the word of God. That's what Paul tells us in Romans 12. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because the thought and the imagination of people are evil from their youth. And the scripture tells us as a person thinks in his heart, so he is. As you think in your heart, so you are. What are you thinking? What are the things you what are the things you give yourself to? What are the things that you you delight yourself to do. Christ came with good thought. Glory be to God. A thought of love. A thought of kindness. A thought of goodness. A thought of mercy. A thought of forgiveness. Hallelujah. And so if you are a Christian, you must train yourself. Think right. And you must pray and ask God to help you. Jesus told us in his, in his blessed are the pure, for they will see God. You know the reason why many people will never see God is because they are thinking he's wrong. Because as a person thinking in their heart, who they are. To so they are. So the question to you and I today is, how different are we? Glory be to God. How different are we? I prophesy that you will be like Noah in his generation. I prophesy that God will use you as an example of his generation. 
I prophesy that any evil thought and imagination in your heart, in your life that is trying to lure you away from the will of God, let those imagination be destroyed. The Bible says, take captive every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. He said, take it captive. I prophesy over you, receive the grace to take every evil thought captive. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace. Be free from evil thought. Be free from evil imagination. Be free from demonic thought. Be free from demonic imagination. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of God over your life. I release the grace of God over your life. I release the help of God over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you that let there be help for you from above. That may God remember you. May God remember you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, from today, I get rid of evil thought, evil imagination, wickedness, violence, and evil out of my heart. I am a child of God, and I receive the spirit of grace, the spirit of peace, the spirit of love, and of sound mind. In the name of Jesus, any spirit working in me that is not of God, let that spirit get out in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. As you pray like that, then you study the word of God and pray. You will begin to be transformed. He tells us, be ye transformed at the renewing of your mind. Evil thought and evil imagination is what destroys Noah and his generation. Even though the ways of God were there, even though Noah was a preacher of righteousness, yet people still decide to live in their sin. Today we have Christ who have come. People still to live in their sin. They're wicked. But you who call yourself a righteous person, a believer, a Christian, You must live in obedience to us, God. You must live in obedience. That is his message for us to know. That this passion of Christ shows us the obedience of Christ even to the point of death. He was obedient. And Jesus himself will say, if you love me, if you say you follow me, you believe in me, do what I said. Obedience is required. So may God bless you. Does anyone have a question? Um, do you want to have, you want to ask a question so we can uh, address your question before it goes off? Do you have a prayer need so I can pray for you before I go off? If you have a question or a prayer need, you can bring it forth now. Hallelujah. So tomorrow we will look at the seed, the seed, all right, the seed, which lead to Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. All right, if you don't have a question, you have a prayer need. If you don't have a prayer need, I'm going to pray and then close up. So as a believer, walk in obedience. Bless God. Walk in obedience. 
obeying God is better than sacred. God prefer us obeying him than preaching to the whole world. God prefer us obeying him than doing all the great works. God prefer us obeying him than being religious. To be obedience means your action are based and approved by the word of God. That means anything God doesn't want, you cannot do it. Even if it will bring you shame and hurt, if it is not of God's will, you can do it. He said it is better to suffer with Christ than to enjoy the pleasure of sin. All right? And so we're celebrating this. But do you know what Christ went through? He went through suffering. He went through rejection. He went through all kinds of betrayals, insult, and disrespect. But it was written about him that he was a lamb that was silent before his slaughter. Because it was God's will for him, he suffered. How about us? The celebration of the, the passion of Christ is an act of love to teach us a lesson how we ought to live for humanity. He says, I love you, do the same. We will come to that in our later teaching about this passion of Christ thing. You know, in this season, people are religious, but the same people, you see that they are wicked, they are evil in their heart. The way they think and look at all that, they are evil in their heart, but they are celebrating an act of love first. And the Bible says, he who does not love does not know God and is not a child of God. Because God is love. He said, this is how we know that one knows God is by loving others. So may God bless you. All of you who are watching, uh, Dobi, uh, Ma, Ben, uh, Ver, Nahash, and all so on and so on and so on. The peace of the Lord be with you. Don't forget to like, you know, comment and subscribe. That will help us to uh, continue to have more followers and more activities page and if you have your question write it down if you don't have write it down for tomorrow we will take them tomorrow whatever question you have bring them on and we will discuss about them in our later teaching so may god bless you may god be with you if you are sick i pray for you i pray for your miracle your deliverance pray the peace of god will go home your house and what you do in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for it. Touch for you. Touch them, Father. In the name of Jesus. Those who are struggling, I pray for the peace of Christ over your spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Bless you. And have a good day.